Let's go, girls. From New York City to Los Angeles, Powered Up with Beck and Franklin is giving women of all ages permission to live the life they've always dreamed of. Why live in black and white when you can choose the brilliance of 3D and Technicolor? Each week, Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin and their high-powered guests will be here to cheer you on, to share their challenges, their successes, and what they've learned along the way. It's all about women supporting women. The stories and practical tips on sex, beauty, money, and so much more are designed to help you reconnect to the powerful woman you are. Fabulous knows no limits. Now it's time for you to expand your boundaries. Here are Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin. Hey ladies, this is Sandra Beck and I'm here with Linda Franklin and this is Powered Up Talk Radio and we are visiting today with Psychic Lori Johnson and we're going to talk about how the energy recently is no mercy, tough love and boy, you got that right, Linda. How about, how are things on the East Coast? I think it's I think it's the same all over. I mean, and we'll talk to Lori about it, the energy is, is crazy. It, it, you know, it's just <laughs> everybody... Uh, feels like I think that they're going to have to jump off a building, <laughs> especially if you're tuned into that energy. Uh, I know I talked to a friend today, and he, I mean, I, th- I think he developed Bell Palsy uh, oh. because you know, and, and he t- and he says everything is. He's been talking about like even sounds being so amplified that every. And we live in New York City, so it's noisy all the time. That as soon as he gets home, he has to put earplugs in. You know, and he, you know, he's going to go to the doctor and check it out, but, you know, it's just like everything is, like, amplified by a thousand. It is. It is. You know, people are getting sick, and instead of just a normal flu, you know, they're really yeah. sick. I, I turn on Facebook. I see all these, you know, hospitalizations. You know, not, you're not withstanding my dad, you know, who normally gets a cold, but, you know, it's yeah. pneumonia, and it's really... And everything just seems amplified. Like, I know for me, you know, it feels like there's like a heavy, like a big fat angel sitting on my chest every day, and it's hard to take a breath. It's hard to walk around. It's hard to feel a beat. And, you know, it, it's it's everyone, it, you know, it, it's not just me, it's not just you, it's a very, very heavy time. And I'd like to welcome to the show right away, Lori Johnson. Uh, she is our resident, you know, superstar psychic that comes on and shares with us, uh, you know, her insight into what's going on. You can uh, see her at LoriJohnsonPsychic.com, L-A-U-R-I-E, that's how she spells her name, Johnson, J-O-H-N-S-O-N, Psychic. Um, I'd like to bring her on early into the the conversation, Linda, because I we got to know. It feels like the angels are beating us up these days. Lori, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's good to be here. I am so glad you're here. Um, you know, we talk about tough love, no mercy with this latest energy. What is going on? Yeah, this is our graduation year. Um, and usually when you get into the final year of a big lesson being learned or a big shift going on, you get the really hard tests, and that's what we're in right now. One of the things that we as human beings do not really do well is to settle into who we are and face our own demons, um, usually because the world is very demanding on our time, and you have to play catch-up, and you have to get money, and you have to work hard, and you don't usually get time for self. Plus, we're usually not taught from the very beginning to spend time with self, to examine why you're having a hard time or why you're carrying issues from childhood or from past lives. We are taught to just put that behind us and move forward. Even in relationships, if a relationship falls apart, most people don't take the time to heal from that. They want to get into another one so that they feel better, but it doesn't solve the inner issues. So with everything that's going on, with all the energy shifts that we are in, which are accelerating, and yes, they are being very much amplified, This is a year where we have to know who we are probably better than we've ever known before. And if we don't, it will be shoved right in our faces. That's the no mercy part. We're just not used to having to look at it that way, and it makes everybody uncomfortable because functioning and being able to do what you want to do, get the money and that kind of thing, that's usual. That's normal. Aquarian age energy, which we're in now, requires you to be conscious. 
and I can probably name on one hand the people that I know, including psychics that I know, who are really conscious. What so this is a lesson mean? in getting there, and there is no mercy because we've been working on it for a long time. But, you know, I'm going to stop you here because, and Sandra, I want to ask you, what does that mean to be conscious? Because that's one of those words that everybody learns how to spell in second grade, and we use it a lot. But in this in this terminology, what does that look like? Like, what does a conscious person look like? Or what does a conscious person sound like, other than you? <laughs> a person who is aware, in this case, aware of who they are, aware of why they are the way that they are, and basically aware of how they put their energy on others. Very few people on the planet, and I'm going to say the whole planet because this is a worldwide thing. This isn't just in the States or whatever. This is a, a phenomenon that's going on, but if you do not know who you are and very specifically the energy that you're putting out, which is a reflection of how you think about yourself, then you're not conscious because being conscious is you are aware of everything that you put out, all the energy, all the vibes, all the emotions, if you're reacting badly to something and you take it out on somebody else, you have to be aware that you're doing that and not just feel bad and feel, well, I'm having a hard time, so everybody else is. Conscious is, you know, you don't have to know every single granule of who you are, but know the core, know what your soul is, know what your soul purpose is, and that doesn't usually get taught when we're younger. Laurie, it's Linda. I have a question. Um, even the people, the people, the handful of conscious people that you might know, but most of them aren't, is that unbeknownst to them and, and certainly not something that they're looking for? But are people getting ill? I mean, Sandra talked about this flu thing. I mean, is that just a, a thing or is that, uh, is that a result of what's going on on the planet? Because so many people, as she said, is, are getting pneumonia. I know a couple here in New York. She has her dad out in California. Um, my husband had a terrible cold uh, hacking away in, in December, and, and it, it came back last week. I mean, you know, that's unusual. But is that, is that separate and apart from what we're talking about? No, not at all. One of the ways for... Um our higher self or God, creator, the universe, however we want to say it, um, teaches us, one of the ways that they teach us is to um, have the energy right in front of us as a mirror. If we don't get that, it will go inside because you will pay more attention if you're feeling badly to what you have to take care of in yourself than you will if it's outside and you can shove it out of the way. So, yeah, and the thing with the flu is that we've been building and building and building over the last couple of years that when it comes, the whole point of it, of any disease, especially the flu or a cold, is not, you know, to knock you down and really be really serious, but it is to help you to rest. If you're really overwhelmed and stressed out and you need to rest, your body has, if you want to do technical, it gets a low immune system, and then you pick something up. But basically it's the body saying, shut down, relax, recoup, get your energy back. But then in this society, it is, okay, let's take drugs so that if I feel like crap, I can still work as opposed to focusing on self. So it's another way of getting us to focus on self in a way that's like a really big slap in the face because especially men, which are taught bigger, better, harder, stronger, faster, get out there, make more money, do this, do that. We don't have a society that's really geared toward resting and, you know, taking the time. You know, you get pregnant, you have a baby, you got three months. It doesn't matter if you're ready to go back to work in three months. That's your time frame. So there's a stress factor, and it goes against the body, and we don't pay attention to it because we're so used to it that we live with it. And this year is everything that you've put up with, everything that you've lived with that is not good for you, that is not part of your core, you're going to have to reexamine or it's going to hit you in the face or get inside. Sandra, I just want to ask you a question. It's Linda, um, is this something that, you can hmm, relate to with your dad or or you can't at all well i think it's hard to to know like kind of what is what um but i know that we've as a family you know with my ex-husband we've been under a lot of recent stress so i'm not surprised and you know when my dad is stressed he doesn't sleep at night and then he's tired and he gets all off and doesn't eat right you know and that's like a recipe for sickness and um lori i was right on with you you know with that you know you can't have time to be sick i felt a little bit of you know whatever my dad had coming on over me and immediately turned to some antibiotics so I could keep going, keep working, keep taking care of the kids. Um, so, yes, it very much so is. Yeah. 
Well, I have a question, um, Lori. You know, I try to work really hard with the things that I learn on these shows. Um, you know, I look at these shows as I'm the student and, you know, I bought this, this like manifestation book or this law of attraction book. I don't know. It's a workbook that had pretty pictures online. It looked like something I could do at night when I'm not too tired to kind of manifest things and to, you know, figure out what I want. It has been sitting on my nightstand for like three weeks now. And I even bought pretty pens to color in it, which normally is right up my alley and I could get started, but I just feel stumped for the first time in my life. I don't, it's not that I don't want anything or need anything and you know we're coming up to commercial break so i'm going to have to you know i'll ask you this after the break um but are you finding people are having a hard time at introspection with all this energy too yes very much well it's a different way of looking at ourselves that we haven't faced before which makes it difficult Okay. Yeah, because I just, um, I want to talk more about this after the commercial break. Um, and you had a book that came out in February. So I want, um, to, to, for people to know where to find that book. Okay. Um, that's, uh, on Amazon. It's a Kindle book at the moment. Um, it's going to be paperback shortly, but at this moment, you can get it on Kindle and Amazon. And what's it called? It's called Into the Aquarian Age Understanding the Consciousness Shift. Okay, so it's important, I think, you know, because when people listen to you, I think it's neat. You know, you've got a book out. It's good um, for for people to know about that. It's good for us to read it. Um, when we come back from the break, we're going to talk more with Lori Johnson. And if you want to uh, check out Lori Johnson, you can go to her site. It's really neat. Linda and I both get her newsletter. Uh, we get so excited when it comes out, don't we, Linda? And, you know, talk about um, what's, uh, you know, what, what what Lori's talking about and the one thing I do like about the stuff that Lori does is it's interesting and it's new and it's it's not a, what's already out there but it's fairly easy to understand as many of you know you know I'm not a scholar at this stuff Linda you're really good at this stuff and you know I'm just learning so sometimes I have to actually look up the words and that's okay because that's how we learn and in the beginning we are all learners so we're going to come back from the break and talk more with Lori Johnson and uh, more about what the energy is out there and how it affects us more after the break we've got lots more powered up with Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin after these messages Have you heard? The pages of American Patchwork and Quilting magazine come to life on our new weekly online radio show, American Patchwork and Quilting. Join Pat Sloan, our blogging and quilt designer host, as she talks about the latest trends, ideas, and inspirations. Her guests include quilt pattern designers, authors, quilt shop owners, and our editors, all quilters just like you. Call in with your questions. Get quilting tips from industry experts. Learn about free patterns. Hear behind-the-scenes stories from our magazines, American Patchwork and Quilting, Quilt Sampler, and Quilts and More. Get the scoop on free stuff and find out more about the best independent quilt shops in North America. To listen to a live show, tune in Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Just log on to allpeoplequilt.com slash radio. To hear past shows, go to iTunes and search for American Patchwork and Quilting Radio. We hope you'll join us because we know that quilting changes everything. It's words you never heard. This year's Super Bowl will air in 180 countries. And with that infamous coin toss for one day, most people will toss out their New Year's resolutions to lose weight. The Super Bowl accounts for 7% of an entire year of chicken wing sales. 48 million Americans will opt for having food delivered, with pizza franchises seeing their sales double on game day. Domino's alone looks forward to selling over 11 million pizzas on Super Bowl Sunday. What's a word for food that contains unknown ingredients? Acampucky. Americans will eat over 100 million pounds of guacamole and 8 million pounds of tortilla chips on game day. What's a word for those folks who call in sick the morning after a little too much indulgence? Our farfanoffs. It's words you never heard. I'm Carolyn Davidson, and you can have fun challenging your words you never heard vocabulary with my free app, Too Funny for Words.
we're back with Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin. Here's more Powered Up with Beck and Franklin. Hey, ladies, this is Sandra Beck, and we're visiting today with Lori Johnson, and we're talking today about the energetic, uh, I don't know if it's a shift anymore, it's just kind of what is, this no mercy, tough love, um, energetic realm that we're living in right now. Um, Lori, I wanted to ask you, because one of the things I'm struggling with, you know, I did go online, I did buy this really snazzy, pretty journal that spoke to me, and I was going to write in my affirmations and my manifestations, and, you know, it's all about the law of attraction. It was, you know, very attractive to me. I was so excited to get it. And the best thing, you can put it in the microwave and nuke it, and it deletes all the ink so you can start over again if you write with oh, wow. one. Oh, yeah. That was like, I was attracted it to it first because of its technological savvy and its, like, earth-mindedness. And then, you know, and then I got my pens, and I, I, I looked at them. They're so pretty, and then the book is so pretty. And then I just stopped. And, you know, I've talked to a couple of my friends who are all doing some self-work, you you know, in this, you know, first quarter of the year. And they're like, I don't know, I can't get it. I can't. Ah, And it's almost like, like I ran out and then all of a sudden somebody held my arms back and I'm trying to dive in the pool, but I can't dive in. Yeah. Um, part of this is in, in trying to move forward. That's the whole point that we can't get right now. We have to be looking at ourselves on a really, really deep level because a lot of the things that are stopping us from moving forward are not things that are in our conscious mind. We've either put them behind us, like I said before, or they're so deep, like past life influences that we just never healed or things that happened, mainly things that happened in childhood. People are looking back on issues that came from childhood or past lives, although most people don't think of it that way, but just say from childhood and how it's created patterns in their lives that they never thought they were going to experience. Like, you know, somebody does it one bankruptcy and that's good, that's fine. They got them out of the hole and then they do another one or another one or they keep picking the same kind of person over and over and over again. So being able to move forward first takes us going back and kind of clearing the slate or being clear on who we are because otherwise you're manifesting with the same issues that are stopping you from manifesting in the first place. So there's a part that is honestly a little overwhelmed, if not a lot overwhelmed, by having to do this self-work because it's literally like we're trying to talk or think in a different language than we ever did before because we never had to do this depth of work before. So doing a manifestation is basically about the future. It's about what you're calling into you. Even if you're talking about I want to be really clear on who I am or I am clear on who I am, it isn't that stuff that is dealing with on one level the level that we are having to focus on ourselves now is much deeper than that, and it requires um, kind of like a consciousness shift or a thought pattern shift or a vibrational shift in us for order to get there. And many of us will not actually reach that level, but we can still do the best that we can, and it kind of clears things. This is not the way the whole entire year is going to feel. We're probably going to have this push at the longest, maybe up until May, but chances are... You know, you talk about first quarter. When we get into the end of this month, it probably will be a lot easier. We've got a solar eclipse that's pretty intense coming up a week from today. And that means we're in, we're going to be moving into the dark of the moon energy, which is when the moon does not show at all right before the, the new moon. This is going to be a really intense time because as we are getting more sensitive and vibrationally more aware, we are also being able to pick up things like the moons, the full moons, the new moons, the dark of the moons, like the Mercury retrograde that can be really, really strong this year because there are four of them. All the shifts that are going on, we are going to be far more aware of those, but they are all there to help us dig deep. Most people get incredibly either crazy or depressed right before the new moon, this year specifically, and yet each one of those um, things, the retrogrades or the moons or whatever, or, or our inner selves are just taking us on a deeper, deeper level. It's just really hard to move forward with something when your body is telling you, work on the old stuff, don't work on the new. 
Well, and I think too, I just want to throw this out there. My old, like my old, like wish list, manifications, vision board, dream list, whatever you want to call them, that old stuff was pretty prosaic. It was pretty easy. I want to write and finish my book. I want to start and, you know, a new radio show for this. You know, it was very tangible. I want to pay off this credit card. I want to, you know, it was really um, earthly, if you will. But this mm-hmm. new thing is like trying to figure out like what I want. And I'm a different person than I was like 10, 20 years ago. And there's not really a whole lot of material things I want. Of course, we can have more money. Everybody loves to have more money. It makes life a lot easier. Um, but it's about like manifesting a relationship or friendships or, you know, who I want to be and how I want to feel. And that's that's really hard. It is. It is because we're still, um, it's as if there's a subconscious part of us that is doing this hard work. And normally there's a subconscious part that's doing work for us all the time anyway, but right now it's taking so much of our energy that we don't really have as much to focus on on the surface thing. And even though the stuff that you're talking about is not surface, the work that is being done is so deep, the subconscious can do it and kind of like um, drain your battery by taking up 75% of the energy that you have, which makes, again, people susceptible to disease or to illness or just tired or just depressed or, you know, overcome with emotions. And the level of being able to move forward with anything, again, if we don't clear up where we came from or what is part of the past for us that is stopping us from being able to do anything, then we can't really manifest anything. So when you talk about um, being able to get clarity on that or clarity just on self, it's just a different level. It's like we've been speaking English all this time, and now we're having to think in Sanskrit. San, I want to ask you a question. Um, I, I real, you talked about this workbook, and you're, you know, it's been sitting there, and you haven't been able to to open it and and start. Um, have you been doing your meditation through this period? Um, you know, no, I haven't. I've been so busy. I haven't. I haven't sat okay. down and meditated. And I haven't gone to yoga in two weeks because everybody's been so yeah. sick. So what I so what I'm thinking, and this is just you know my what came up for me is when you're sitting to to look at your next chapter and what you want to accomplish and write in books and do all of these other things in the book. It seems like to me too much of a head thing, too much of a brain thing, too much thinking involved, and and that's hard. You your brain is full of stuff now. You you can't be thinking about that. But when you quiet down, I don't think you have to. It's going to come to you when you're ready to be quiet and sit and listen to your meditation again rather than have to use your brain to, to, to get all of this stuff down on a piece of paper. I mean, what do you think about that? Um, am I crazy, um, Lori, or, is it, or that's just what came up for me? No, that's exactly right. What we're being taught is to be in the moment and go with the flow. And a lot of people nowadays are feeling very lonely, even if they are married, have children, and have a lot of things to do. There's a loneliness because it's almost like you're not recognized by anybody that you know, and you don't recognize anybody that you know. And feeling lost, again, even with the people that have been really close to you right now. Um, and part of that is to, again, get us more into self and to connect with spirit, with your guides, angels, and ancestors, however you connect with God, with Mother Mary, with whatever works, whatever is the connection, because the energy is all out there. We put different names on it depending on the religion or belief system that we have, but the energy is the same. God can be called creator or spirit or Allah, whatever. It's the same energy. So being able to get that direct connection is what we are kind of being forced to do because getting information from anybody else, having help from anybody else, and even being able to go inside and know ourselves, we get more information on how to do that and more support from the spiritual energy than we will get from literally ourselves without that help or from anybody else. So you said that made sense to you, Sam. Maybe you, you, you know, it would just try to get back to your yoga and to your meditation, you know, when you can. I mean, you know, there's yeah, when you can, you'll know. It's important. Yeah, when you can, um, because then you you may not need your book, or if you do, it'll it'll come easier for you. Well, that's the thing. Go, I'm creative. sorry. Go with the flow on things, because if you're not feeling the yoga right now, 
it's not going to benefit you at the moment. Well, I'm feeling it. I just can't seem to get between sick kids, sick dad, sick me, and then work. You know, it's been a it's been a tough two weeks. I'll be honest with you. It's it's taxed me. You know, and yeah. I'm planning to go away on the 11th. I've got somebody to take care of my kids, somebody to take care of my dad. It'll be the first time I've gone away without anybody in over a year. You know, where I can wow. just be at peace. And you know, I think that. You know, it's funny. I always talk about Linda being my lighthouse, Lori, you know, and this is where, you know, good friends or best friends really come into play. You know, she could just Johnny on the spot say, okay, you know, have you been going to yoga? No. Have you been meditating? No. And you could just go in there. Have you been eating right and exercising? No, no, no. (laughs) You know, just everything goes, you know, falling down. But I think it's hard, Lori, sometimes, you know, when people really are intent on improving, like I am, like, it's hard to know when to start or what's reasonable. And, you know, then you, you pour on like all this other stuff that comes up. You mentioned childhood, you know, stuff that comes up, but you also talk about in your, um, in one of your writings about even past lives coming up just to muck up the monkey works. Well, this is a very specific life right now because while we were in the middle of it in 2012, we had such profound changes that happened. And I know I've talked about this so much, people are probably tired of hearing about it, but we had a shift from a 2,000-year arc of the Piscean Age into the Aquarian Age, a 5,125-year shift from a day of mankind into the next day of mankind, and a 26,000-year shift um, from the procession of the equinoxes all based on the Mayan calendar, but all that happened on the same day. So this is a profound life to be able to end arcs of past lives, because usually what we do is we will... Learn something like, you know, you study in college, you study mathematics, and so you have all these different classes on mathematics. Some people do arcs. Most people do where you will take something. I'm going to be in the military for many, many, so many lifetimes and learn all that. But there, this is a lifetime of completion and being able to clear yourself so that you can start another arc based on everything that you've learned so far. And that includes in relationships or in rhythms of how you have been, um, I have a, a client and a friend who was very, very, is majorly in love with France because she was there right before the revolution, and she loves all this decadent stuff, and it doesn't really fit into her lifestyle now. She Ooh, still wants gonna, it. So Lori, a, I'm going to cut you off right now. I'm going to oh, take yeah, us to a commercial break. No, it's great. Um, we're going to leave you with the cliffhanger. We're going to find out, you know, what do you do when your past life comes forward and it doesn't fit within your current life or it's a nuisance or it's upsetting. There's many, many different things that happen. We're going to find out from Lori what to do after the break. We've got lots more powered up with Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin after these messages. This is for all you girls about 42. Tossing pennies into the fountain of youth. Every- it's merging. Traditional American breakfast, including fried egg, bacon, toast, and potatoes, must seem really heavy to the rest of the world. When my husband and I were in the Amazon, our breakfast consisted of crocodile, deep fried piranha, and bananas. I can assure you, I ate pretty lightly. For breakfast in Russia, some people enjoy a spoonful of jam in their tea. Now that sounds yummy. What's a word for a person who loves jam? A paziwala. What's another word for weak tea? Whack rowdy dow. Salamagundi was originally an English dish of chopped meat, anchovies, and eggs, garnished with onions, lemon juice, oil, and condiments. Mornings at our house are too hectic to go to all that trouble for breakfast. I'm scrambling just to get some eggs on the table. It's words you never heard. I'm Carolyn Davidson, and you can have fun challenging your words you never heard vocabulary with my free app, Too Funny for Words. If you could live your life truly standing in a place of peace, joy, and abundance, wouldn't that make your heart soar? Now you can, with Lessons in Joyful Living, with your host, Kimberly Rinaldi, Mondays at noon central. Kimberly Rinaldi, having created a highly successful coaching practice, now teaches Lessons in Joyful Living. She believes in empowering others and that through it, you have the ability to break through any and all barriers, thus allowing you to reach your greatest potential and joyfully step into your life's purpose. 
What used to take weeks, months, or even years, she can now teach you in a matter of hours with her programs. For more on Kim and her show, go to her website, KimberlyRinaldi.com. That's R-I-N-A-L-D-I.com. Then join us for Lessons in Joyful Living with your host, Kimberly Rinaldi. We're back with Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin. Here's more Powered Up with Beck and Franklin. This is Hey, ladies, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Linda Franklin, and we are visiting with Psychic Lori Johnson today. If you like this show or you missed the first half and you'd like to find more like it, please check us out on iTunes under Powered Up Talk Radio. You can go to our website, PoweredUpTalkRadio.com. You can find us on Facebook. You can also go to our host station, Toginet, T-O-G-I-N-E-T dot com, for this and hundreds of hours of other programming like this available for free. So, I'm really excited because, Lori, you help us a lot. I know you help me a lot, and you give Linda and I a lot to talk about when your newsletter comes in. Um, But before we move on to another topic, you were talking about, before we went to the break, um, the lady who had the France stuff, the the stuff coming up from her past. Yeah. Well, luckily, she's a very conscious individual. So um, she's always loved the French. Her, Her apartment is just decorated with so much French... Uh, Louis the whatever it is, it's just, it's gorgeous. She has really good taste, but it also drives her in that she's in that imbalance on do I follow what I really want? What is, is that a greed? Is that an ego to want all these things, to want to travel to France when I can't afford it, but I really want to be there because I'm getting that pull back. And one of the things that's hard for her is because she is so conscious of everything, she can remember this or remember the feel of it. And it gets in the way of what she's here to accomplish in this lifetime. Um, but it is also teaching her to, um, it's okay for her to like leisure and to like decadence, but to balance that with the reality of who she is and what she came in to learn in this lifetime. And sometimes people cannot get that balance where, especially well, men, when they've come out of the Piscean age where they've been in charge of everything, and they want to be able to maintain that they are in charge of everything, even if they haven't earned it, or that's not where we are now as a consciousness in human self, being able to um, look at one, you know, one group of people like the men are going to be more important than the women. They have a really, really hard time adjusting to that and keeping the balance of this is where I came from, this isn't where I am now. Mm-hmm. She's doing a pretty good job, but when I talked with her today, it was like not this was not an easy time for her because she was really pulled to the decadence and to, you know, even traveling when she knew that that was not a good thing for her. Hmm. But how does she, how does she know, so she can do, she can know what's good for her versus what's, what's not good for her and coming from another lifetime, she can, she can feel that? Most of the time, but that's why we talked today because she couldn't get a good handle on it. Uh, because she was really judging herself that um, she shouldn't be doing this because of money, even though she can always make money, but she shouldn't be doing this because it's frivolous, and yet that's stopping who she is, but there's the balance of, again, what she's drawn to that doesn't have to do with her in this lifetime and how to be able to enjoy that without having that take over your life. But what if she's drawn to it and she does go back to to France and and, and it it can finalize that so it isn't part of her now life no she's been back to to france several times it hasn't finalized anything for her it's just made her wanting to be alive in that time frame there was a a story about edgar casey when he was doing past life readings for people and there was a woman in his town who was very overweight and very unhappy and he did a reading for her he did his his trance and he came out of it and basically said that in the last life that she was a courtesan who was so beautiful and so desired that men would travel hundreds of miles just to spend a night with her. And she was so enamored with that lifetime that she basically never did anything else. She didn't try to fix herself. She didn't try to see what else she needed to learn. She got overcome with how it was, and that was so much easier than where she was. She didn't want to deal with what was going on in her life in the moment. That's the downfall of it, but, you know, my client here kind of gets balanced, but Everybody gets out of balance, you know, at some point, or the thought process, especially now where we're questioning everything, 
it can throw us off a lot. She's handling it pretty well, but it can, you know, tip the scales sometimes. Um, I just want to talk for a moment, and then and then we can go back to um, whatever you want to talk about about the transference of energy. Um, I know that people that are very in, attuned and very conscious um, can pick up the energy of everything and everyone around them. I have a friend who is who is very very psychic, and this weekend he, he didn't even ta- he had to get away. He didn't even take his dog. He had to just get away and be absolutely perfectly quiet by himself. And it's yeah. funny, and he, you know, and things are really, his, even his friends that are very dense are, are really starting to annoy him. And, it's, and I went to see him today, and he, he actually got Bell palsy. And oh. I, it's like, whoa, you know, uh, which is, you know, it hurts to talk. You know, it's, it's but what about the other way? Um, could we pick up, you know, he's very conscious and very psychic. Um, can can his clients pick up his energy, even though they're not particularly conscious? Um, yeah, um, yes, especially with people who are psychic, um, or I would say extra sensitive, because on one level we're all psychic. Yeah. Many people just don't want to deal with it or they're not taught about it, so they shut it down here. But um, usually people who are really psychic are exuding energy. I can't say that 100% because I've known many psychics that I would not trust to take care of a a snail. But (laughs) usually somebody who is on that level to be aware of that bandwidth of vibration, the energy that they give off, they are either more aware of what they're giving off or they are giving off on a higher level that is not creating the chaos but is trying to create the connection with higher source. So if somebody is very dense and not conscious, that could actually frighten them and don't and would 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 make them kind of run away from that other person. Yeah, it does sometimes. I've had people that come in for a reading and they really are not very aware of much of anything at all and they get freaked out and I'm feeling that they can take what I'm saying and they can, but they've been taught not to not to open that part up. So, yeah, it can freak some people out. I understand that. And that's the other thing that a psychic is supposed to do is not just get the information to give to the person, to know how the person and what the person can hear. Let's take Sandra's example for a minute. You know, she, her kids are sick and her dad is sick and, you know, she's taking all of this stuff. Are they, are they kind of propagating that energy amongst them and, and making it harder for them to get well or get well slower or... Yeah, it is. It's kind of like, you know, kids in school will keep infecting each other. Yes. And it yes. is like that, um, especially in a close environment, uh, because kids are kind of cool because they just throw the energy out and they receive it, and it's like, yeah, okay, that's the way it's supposed to be. They get affected by it, but they're not as damaging, obviously, because they don't have <laughs> the depth in their consciousness to be able to mess with people because they're so angry or they're, you know, had experiences that are so negative. Um, but, yeah, the kids especially will pick up a lot of stuff if there is disharmony in the house. I'm not saying there is with you, obviously, but there's this disharmony in the house and there's a, a divorce coming and the kids don't know about it. They know about it. They might not know how to put their finger on it, but they know about it in one level or another depending on how much they allow that consciousness to come forward. So, yeah, um, the energy without just traveling germs back and forth, the energy travels back and forth. Well, I'm going to ask you, Lori, something about, like, you know, because I'm just curious about this. Um, on an energetic level, like when you're divorced or I'm divorced, there are times that I can just feel like this oppressive, I don't know, ugly energy coming at me. It feels very attacking. And then, you know, I can't put my finger on it. And then my kid will come home from his dad's and say, oh, my God, dad and -and so-and-so were talking about you, mommy, and this is what they said, and it was really awful. And I already, I go immediately into my containment mode. I'm like, well, I'm so sorry that happened to you, honey. How did that make you feel? You know, and I decompress them. But I, I always wonder, like, can that really come like, come across the, you know, I don't know, like like the airwaves, if you will, to me from that conversation. Like, can I, can, can you feel that? Like, and yes. not be in the room and not be present? And then what do you oh, do yeah. with that? Well, the, the part of it is that even though you don't want to have a direct connection with him, 
because there is a divorce, and no matter what reason it was there, um, when he can get really vehement, he kind of connects with you because you still have a tie because of the children. So you kind of keep this low-level connection between the two of you for the good of the children that isn't about the two of you as individuals or your relationship. It's just about the kids, but that also means that you are able to receive this from him, not willingly, because if you had a choice, you'd say, I don't want to hear about that stuff. But right. he, he, when somebody gets really, really intense and throws that energy out, because he's not aware he's throwing the energy out. In fact, if anything, he would like that energy to really decimate somebody else. Because it's his frustration, his anger, his righteousness, and being able to throw it out there, he wants somebody else to feel it to make him feel justified. So you have that connection with him because of the kids. And, yes, you can pick up when he's like that, um, specifically if he's talking about you. Not if he's upset about anything else, but if he is turning that vehemence toward you, yes, definitely. Because, again, you can cut that tie, but then, again, you keep it open for the good of the children. Okay, so I need to take us to commercial break, but I would love to hear more about this when we come back from the break because I know I'm not the only person that was in a relationship or in a family relationship. You know, sometimes there's, it's not, you're not able to cut a family tie because of your whole family. And so you do, you kind of go on the down low or you, you put that tie to the lowest level possible, but it's not really effective or prudent or great for the family family as a whole for you to sever that tie completely. So I'm excited when we come back from the break to talk to you more about, um, you know, just about how do we, how do we block ourselves from not only the psychic energy that like in that case, Lori, I don't think it's good for us. I don't think it's coming from the past to help us learn something about us today. Maybe it is. I don't know. I, you know, I just know it feels bad. And then when it happens, I feel bad. And then I'm not at my best. Yeah, understood. Yeah, and I just, I can't even tell you uh, what time it is. I know, I, know, I know we're going to commercial break, Linda. Um, I lost it on my phone. I'm trying to struggle with my computer, so bear with me. But we are talking with psychic Lori Johnson today. Her 30 website, seconds. Oh, there we I go. See it on my, <laughs> thank God. Okay, it's Mercury in retrograde or whatever, the solar flares, the moon, I don't know, the solar, what did you say, a solar eclipse? It's all happening right yeah, now. Yeah, we have a solar eclipse talk right now. Yeah. <laughs> so when we come back from the break, more with Lori Johnson on how to protect ourselves from this type of attack. We've got lots more powered up with Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin after these messages. If you could live your life truly standing in a place of peace, joy, and abundance, wouldn't that make your heart soar? Now you can with Lessons in Joyful Living with your host, Kimberly Rinaldi. Mondays at noon central, Kimberly Rinaldi, having created a highly successful coaching practice, now teaches Lessons in Joyful Living. She believes in empowering others and that through it, you have the ability to break through any and all barriers, thus allowing you to reach your greatest potential and joyfully step into your life's purpose. What used to take weeks, months, or even years, she can now teach you in a matter of hours with her programs. For more on Kim and her show, go to her website, KimberlyRinaldi.com. That's R-I-N-A-L-D-I.com. Then join us for Lessons in Joyful Living with your host, Kimberly Rinaldi. February is National Chocolate Month. Historians say the Aztecs discovered chocolate 3,100 years ago, and it was revered to the point of worship. The word chocolate comes from the Aztec word chocolatl, which referred to the bitter, spicy drink the Aztecs made from the cacao beans. The first chocolate bar was invented in 1847 by Joseph Fry. Did you know that it takes one year for a cacao tree to produce enough pods to make 10 chocolate bars? The scientific name for the tree that chocolate comes from, Theobroma cacao, means food of the gods. Man cannot live by chocolate alone. 
but we women sure can. Personally, I could give up chocolate, but I'm not a quitter. It's words you never heard. I'm Carolyn Davidson, and you can have fun challenging your words you never heard vocabulary with my free app, Too Funny for Words. We're back with Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin. Here's more Powered Up with Beck and Franklin. Hey, ladies, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Linda Franklin and Psychic Lori Johnson, and we're going to talk about something that happens when you get that, like, and if you've ever had it, you know what I'm talking about, that weird, icky, awful, uncomfortable feeling, and you know, in my case, it's validated, you know, a day or two later when the kids come home and say, oh, you know, daddy was saying this about you. But it's not always convenient or possible for us to extricate ourselves from certain relationships. It could be a sibling. It could be a parent. It could be your ex-husband or ex-wife and you still share custody of the kids. Or it could be somebody you work with. Or it could be all of the above because, boy, you got a divorce and a family business. You kind of check, check, check with that box. and. Yeah. When you're dealing with somebody who, and it's so funny, Lori, because I have this new word now. It's like, well, you know, this person is not as evolved. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I learned that from you. Thank you very much. Um, it's a good word. But the, the point is, is they really aren't. And there's, they do throw like big, big energy, angry mud balls at you. At least I feel that way. And I know other people have felt that way. And Linda, you can talk a little bit about that too. I mean, you've had that feeling where you're like, I know somebody's just dogging me and you can't put your finger on it until later. Um, really not so much anymore. I, you know, I, I, I think that I'm, I'm, gone so cocoon-like that I'm trying to insulate myself as much as possible from all the outside chatter. And um, I, I'm so happy when I'm in that place. So, I, you know, I highly re- recommend it. <laughs> what about when you were on Wall Street, though, when you were working in that high-stress, high... Well, yes, but I mean, that's a long time ago, and I... Yeah, I mean, but it was just a sense that you knew something was going on. There was an underlying current. But, you know, I, I, I certainly wasn't at the place then that I am now, So, um, which is probably a very good thing. But, you know, we, like you said, we evolve. We, you know, hopefully we get smarter as we get older and, and our priority list change so that the really important stuff, you know, sort of floats to the top. And, and, and right now it's just about... Peace and love. I mean, I sounds it sounds like I, I should be in, in Woodstock, but honest to God, that's the way I feel. <laughs> yeah. Well, the strongest power in the universe, by far, without question, is unconditional love. And that any any doubt on anything on any issue that comes up, just look at the situation with unconditional love, and it will make everything better. But wow. when you're talking about um, being able to pick up the energy from somebody else, I have a client who got divorced a year ago uh, with a husband who had been really loyal and wonderful for 10 years and then without warning turned around and said, I'm getting a divorce because I haven't been happy for 10 years, which that had a lot more to do with him being abused when he was a kid and that coming up for him. But she still will have dreams. She has prophetic dreams every once in a while, but she has dreams about him as if he is talking to her and he wants her back and this kind of stuff. And everything that she dreams is accurate and she picks it up and it messes her up for another day because she thought she'd gotten over him. But the point is that they had a karmic connection and she doesn't want to see him fail, even if he hurt her so much. So even on a surface level, she doesn't want to have that connection and she hasn't talked to him or heard from him in almost a full year, but she still gets that hit like you did. It I still comes mean, through. though, like, you know, like this lady, you know, feels sorry for him. I have a hard time with the meanness. Um, yeah. I'm not real good with mean people. I My feelings get hurt really easily, and I have a hard time separating that, you know, which is why I, you know, sometimes I wear a, a shirt with a Batman signal on it because I feel like, <laughs> like, you know, it's like that's my, like, bat power, and it, you know, repels this thing against my heart because, you know, yeah. my ex is a very mean and cutting person. And, you know, it hasn't gotten better over the last seven years. It's actually gotten worse. And so what do we do 
And because it really does, it can throw you off for a couple hours or it can throw you off for a day or it can hang around like in the back of your head. Like yeah. you can't cut those energetic ties. You can't sever them. So how do you just put like a filter or a gateway? I'm a computer person. So let's put a gateway on okay. that, that cable, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. You can do that. You can. It, it, the problem is that if most people do not know where this energy is coming from and most people who are not really in that realm of thinking psychic or the energetic or vibrational shifts that can go on or connections that can go on with people then they can feel this way not know why and think that they're at fault or they're in a bad mood or whatever they don't get first off is to realize and acknowledge and believe that you just picked up energy from somebody else even if you haven't talked to them for a year because if you start questioning it then you do self-doubt, which only adds to the crap that you're dealing with anyway. So whatever you are feeling is accurate. Your gut instinct is accurate 100% of the time. So acknowledge that it's accurate. That's number one. And if you know where that is coming from, meaning that if you talking with him just on a, like a phone level or face-to-face level and you know the telltale signs of when he's going to go all wacky on you, you know how to get out of it or yeah. you know how to just walk away. But because yeah, it's, it's energetic system, instead of yeah. face-to-face, we don't. I'm sorry? Yeah, it's called the court system. He can't communicate with me other than in a court-ordered system. Um, but it's the it's the stuff that just whacks you in the side of the head, like when yep. you're not expecting it. Yeah, it does. But the first thing is, again, to acknowledge that that is what's going on, and it's not something in your imagination. Got it. Because if you put it in your imagination, then you're going to think, oh, I'm just imagining this, and you're judging yourself, and then it makes everything twice as hard to deal with because then you're going against what your gut instinct is telling you. There are things of being able to, this is where the connection with spirit or prayer or whatever is to ask very specifically for the channel to be open for the good of the children without his negativity affecting you. And it's important the way it's said. Access for the channel to be open for the sake of the children without his energy affecting you without his or without his negativity affecting you got it got it because the thing is and it's very important to say it that way to say it without because if you say don't or any of the no words you're just negating everything you said okay right the subconscious and the energetic levels don't deal with negatives so if you want this to to be a constant and you get a hit from this, then literally you just send it back. It's, you're, you're feeling this and you're feeling his animosity. Send it back with love because the, another reason that you have a connection with him is not just the children, but you guys came in and you made an agreement to be together and to work on things together. But this is very common in this lifetime very specifically that women are here to help men wake up and grow up emotionally very specifically grow up. For 2,000 years, men have not had to be emotionally responsible. That was the woman's job. They have to do it right now. They got the memo 200 years ago, and every time they came in, they're supposed to be working on being equal and being an adult male in emotion. And it's kind of like the kid doesn't want to study for the test until the night before. That's what the guys are doing right now. So you get a lot of these guys that are really, 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 really angry, and women who are still not necessarily devoted but still have a channel open to them because the karmic contract was... You were supposed to help them get to a point of growing up. But, like I've said this before, like college curriculum, you can choose the classes and the teachers and the other students. doesn't mean you attend. It doesn't mean you pass. It means that's the intention. So basically the agreement that you guys had when you started off before you came into this lifetime was that you were going to help him wake up. And then by the time he met you, it's like, oh, this is too hard. I quit. So the energy that you were going to put into that kind of came to a halt before you even really got started on it, but you were going to try. So do understand that even though he drives you crazy and he's very, very mean, we're talking that there is a base level of soul love of why you are still connected. Not anything about the surface. It's a hard thing to think about, but it's a different level altogether. Yeah, I've run it all down. So let me ask you a question because, I mean, we all have those, those tough people in our lives and we believe that there's a karmic co- connection and we're, we're bringing it from other lifetimes or whatever. Um, if, we don't, if we don't fix it in this lifetime, I've always thought that we're going to have to fix it sometime. It's just not going to go away after both of us pass, pass on. Um, right. That, you know, so we're going to take that and, and then – Maybe when we're up in, you know, in the next realm, we'll decide whether we want to fix it 
or, or maybe we just have to fix it. But then the last time you were on, you said something that really, you know, really shook me, and that was about um, about coming back and the reincarnation, that if our vibration isn't high enough, we're not going to be able to come back to this planet. We're going to have to go somewhere else to heighten our vibration in order for the privilege of coming back to this yeah. planet. But if these dense people, these people that aren't getting it, they – they they may take a hundred. I don't know. You can't put time on it. They may take yeah. for a very long time to come back to this planet. So does that mean that it is going to take that long for us to work out that particular problem? <laughs> that yeah, means, I know it, it can. Means. But usually, what happens, especially now, because people are not going to be allowed back unless they have a certain vibration, that um, you will hook up with that individual in one way or another. You can choose to go to where they are. And this is choice. This isn't like, you have to do this. This is a choice. I've had a lot of people say, well, I'm not coming back to this planet. And I'm going, you said that. You just, you know, guaranteed that you will. But you don't have to be thrown back in unless that is your choice. But you can go. Just say a situation, you know, with your ex that you don't want to deal with this in this lifetime. But at some point, he's going to have to learn something. And you can feel in between lives that he is just on that cusp of learning you can go and spend that time with him and teach him then. This is all a lot more about choice than it is about you got to do it. But when you get a karmic connection and a karmic contract with somebody, it will be taken care of at some point. And time doesn't really come into it. Got it. Got it. Do, do you get it, Sam? Yeah. I just was kind of disappointing. <laughs> Here I was expecting to, you know, like, you know, grab some sage, whack it around a little bit, maybe set a few things on fire and be done with it. But I don't think it's You can also fight. freeze him. Huh? You can also freeze his energy from bothering oh, you. How do I do that? Now, that one, you got a minute, Lori. You got to tell me how to freeze okay. that. Okay. Go to my website. Check out Metaphysic Gifts, which is the free download. Scroll down. There's a thing called a freezing spell. And it gives you instructions on how to stop people's energy from bothering you. It doesn't stop them from being who they are. It just stops that from bothering you. Oh, well, that's wonderful. You know I'm, I'm, going, there, I'm, I'm, I'm heading there. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all going to be heading there. Uh, Lori, I want to thank you for being our guest today. Uh, if you guys liked what Lori had to say, I want you to go to Lori Johnson. Check out her book on Amazon. Lori, what was the title? Into the Aquarian Age, Understanding the Consciousness Shift. Yeah, it's currently available on Kindle. It will be available uh, in paperback soon. Uh, we can go to Lori Johnson Psychic, and that's spelled L-A-U-R-I-E, johnsonpsychic.com, to sign up for her newsletter. And, of course, you got to go get that free spell, man. I'm going to be there right after we're done with the show. <laughs> I want to thank you, Linda, for always being such a best friend and a great guidance uh, to me. She's my lighthouse, Lori. And thank you, Lori, for being a great guest today. We'll be back again next week. Thank you, ladies. We're so glad you joined us for Powered Up with Beck and Franklin. Sandra Beck, Los Angeles-based single mother and technology company owner, knows what it's like to be fit, funny, and fantastic in your 40s. Linda Franklin, a New Yorker with a successful marriage and 